All right, it's a gorgeous day here in Louisville, Kentucky, gateway to the south, Derby City, and I thought today I might shoot a little bit outside, and we'll take a look at this Marshall uh, JCM 850-watt lead combo. You don't see the combo version too much. This one has had a replaced uh, basket weave uh, grill cloth. Uh, the original was probably boring old black. Um, these are these are pretty kick-ass little amplifiers. We'll take a take a look at the back side of this thing here in just a moment but uh, first let's take a look at the controls we have an input a normal channel uh, with volume treble and bass and a boost channel with gain volume treble middle and bass uh, this also has a reverb master and a uh, master volume standby and power switch obviously also missing one of the little plastic uh, covers for the handle not a huge deal you can get those at part suppliers uh, but let's turn the thing around and check check it out from the back okay here's the rear of the amp first thing we notice is we have a uh, Celestian G 12 M 70 that's a 70 watt speaker should be a little bit more than enough to handle the 50 or so watts of output uh, on the back here we see um, we have a foot switch effects send and return uh, direct in or slave with a level control uh, and an output two outputs actually two speaker outs we have selectors also for the homage on the speaker outs uh, these you just basically you can put a penny or something in here and select or you can screwdriver or whatever uh, you also have a selection for the mains it goes 120 220 or 240 depending on where in the world you are you have uh, fuses for the HT and the mains and a mains input. And Ivy is excited to be outside today because it's such a beautiful day out. Um, those look to me like the original can capacitors. These are from 1986. Um, and if they're still good, we may leave those. Uh, I'll see what the customer wants to do if he wants to order some replacements. It might save him a future uh, repair job, but um you know if they're good they might still be good for you never know they might be good for another 20 years 40 years or they might be good for only another year so it's so entirely up to the customer on that one uh, you see our drake transformers there here's our power transformer it looks like it's slanted a bit off kilter like somebody's maybe dropped the amp at one point see there and here is the output or is that the choke? That's the output transformer. And that will be a choke probably right there. Here's the reverb tank uh, down here. Mounted up against the rear. And I don't recognize that code, so I'm not sure what that is. Looks like we got a spare tube or two down there. Uh, the output tubes are Valve Art EL34s. Uh, those are Chinese and uh, let's see we've got groove tubes and uh, and maybe soft text by the look of it here we're missing a tube right here because uh, uh, he said this thing was uh, eating up tubes it was either V2 or V I thought he said V3 that it was eaten up so I'm not sure why the V2 is not in there I think we were playing around with it whenever he had it in my living room so we're gonna take a look at both of those but uh, but that's that was his complaint that this thing is eating up v3 tubes and as soon as he puts another one in within within just a few minutes it will eat that one up too uh, when he says eat it up I guess he means it uh, stops working and that tube is at fault um, so we'll try to figure out what's going on there maybe we've got some uh, excess voltage or current draw or something there we might have a uh, uh, we might have a situation where there's a, a bad socket, even, uh, or a surrounding component. Uh, but we'll find it, whatever it is. Let's, um, let's go ahead and get this thing up on the bench, uh, get the chassis out, and take a look at that. Hey. Hey. Are you excited? Are you excited? Yeah? Are you excited about the Marshall amplifier? Are you excited about this Marshall? Yeah, Marshall. Can you say Marshall? Oh, right. 
Well, it's amazing how quickly things can change uh, since that last clip. It's turned off kind of rainy and cold outside. Uh, and <laughs> my voice is actually kind of screwed up as a result. So forgive me if I, uh, if I can't talk very well throughout this, the rest of this video. But here's this Marshall uh, out on the bench. And uh, we'll take a little bit of a look at it. And you, first thing you notice, it's a lot simpler than the last Marshall that I had out on the bench. I'll put a link uh, to that one at the end of this video if anyone's interested in seeing that. Uh, that one was a DSL 100. Had That one has many more boards in it. This one just has the one large board up front. You see all the uh, all the pots are direct mounted to the board, which, which I hate. Um, but there it is. They're direct mounted. Um, one upgrade would probably be to break those out and uh, mount those with wires. Um, but that's not the mandate I was given on this. I was given the mandate to check out what's what's going on with the V3 tube and why it keeps blowing tubes. Now V3 uh, is that guy right there. And I'll show you on the schematic what that is uh, here in just a little bit. But first let's get a look around and get a feel for what we're looking at here <clears throat> excuse me you will see that um, all of the tube sockets are mounted to the chassis instead of on boards which is an improvement over the uh, DSL um, there's our big filter capacitors there All right, back here with this Marshall, and uh, the first kind of rule of troubleshooting is we want to eliminate as many variables as possible. So what I've done is I've removed all of the tubes, um, and we're just going to check voltages on all of the tube sockets. There's 276. Yep, 276 there, and let's just check the grids. I've got nothing on the grids to speak of. Okay. Keep in mind also these are these readings are uh, only at half voltage. I don't have it dialed all the way up. I'm just checking that that we have voltage where we should have it. So yeah, we do have voltages all throughout. Um, and they're present. Let's see if we have any voltage. Okay, so this would be the primary of the reverb transformer. Since V3 uh, pushes the reverb tank, um, that would be a suspect, would be that transformer. Uh, maybe there are you know, some short or something within the transformer that is burning out tubes prematurely. And on the primary side, I don't see any evidence of that yet. All right, here's V3B right here. And as we can see, uh, V3B drives the transformer, uh, which uh, changes the impedance for the reverb tank. Um, so we should get readings here at our plate. We should also get the same reading on the other side of this trans uh, primary of the transformer. On the secondary, one of the leads is going to ground directly, and that is the that's this lead here. Let's see. Okay, so that's this one. That one is going directly to ground. So the one that's right next to it. So the white wire right here. Uh, this one is going the that black wire so yeah yeah that's going out to the reverb tank okay let's look at V3A uh, for just a second on the schematic um, I can measure from V3A's grid to ground and it will follow this pot right here which it should you can see it's tied to the wiper of the pot it goes down to zero and the resistance is minimum and then it goes all the way up pretty much to the value of the pot when it's raised all the way up so the pots good it's not pulling anything to ground or causing any uh, any problems um, 
let's just go through and we'll check each of the components that is associated with uh, with the V3A and then we'll move along to the all the components associated with V3B and see if we can't locate a problem. All right, here's the integrated circuit and um, it will actually be flipped uh, upside down uh, from what we're seeing on the schematic because usually they're they're showing it from the bottom so uh, the pin we need is actually over here and it's showing 0.22 microfarads so we are getting the correct value out of uh, this component which is uh, which is the capacitor that we were measuring so that components good alright next up is this 1.5k cathode resistor um, that's biasing that half of the tube uh, we'll check it out here and basically measure from the cathode of that tube over to ground and we are indeed getting 1.5k so that's not the problem all right the next component we want to measure is c18 which should be a 22 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor that is the bypass cap for that stage and we just left our leads where they were because we're measuring from the same two points and we have 485 microfarad um, which is way different than what we expect to see we only expect to see 22 microfarad now there, it could be that there's um, that there's something else in parallel. Let me try. You well, know, the tube's not even in in that socket. So um, interesting. That's something we sh we could probably look at right there. And as a matter of fact, I might go ahead and just change that cap um, because you know it's an older electrolytic anyway. And actually, if this one ends up being a problem, we have several similar caps. You can see one here that's larger. Um, there's another one here beside it. And this amp's off, by the way, so, and it's it's all drained, so we don't have any uh, problems with me sticking my finger in it. I get yelled at stuff like that, about stuff like that a lot on my channel, so, you know, don't freak out. Um, so we have, anyway, several of those in the amp. We may go ahead and think about, if that ends up being the problem, we may go ahead and think about changing all of those, because if one of them is gone, you know, the, the the idea is this thing's from the 80s and it's probably the others are probably not too far behind okay so the new component is soldered in um, but we still have 450 microfarads uh, in that position so I'm thinking that it's just we've got some parallels going on in the circuit uh, that's uh, running up the value so it at least we eliminated that as a possible problem Okay, next up is this little 47 picofarad uh, C48 capacitor. Um, it looks like it's probably bleeding some highs off and stabilizing the circuit right here at this point, uh, keeping some high frequency oscillation because this is a high gain amplifier and I would guess uh, without that you're probably going to get some intermittent high frequency oscillations. You may or may not even hear them. Um, but I think the point of that capacitor is probably to mitigate some of those. So let's uh, check that capacitor now. All right, I've checked all of these components, and these are fine. This is the plate resistor. It's fine. There's another 10K resistor here and a, and a cap. All those are good. So we're going to turn our attention now to the components on this other half of V3. All right, I've got all the tubes popped back in this thing. I uh, have the reverb tank hooked up. Um, and we're just kind of dialing it up slowly here. I've got it at 68 volts on the input. Um, and it's, it's doing something weird. Uh, listen to this. When I turn the gain control all the way down, let's see if it'll still do it. It was making some popping noise when I was doing that a second ago. Yeah, it's going to make a liar out of me now. But um, I'm getting good voltages on the plates of V3. I'm not getting voltage. There's 203 volts on uh, on the B side, and there's 150 or so volts on the A side, and there's no voltage on uh, no voltage on the grids to speak of. But look at this. When I'm tapping that 
tapping that tube just lightly. And this is a brand new good tube that I have in here. It's making making some really weird popping. I mean, I, I would expect if a tube was microphonic that it might make a little bit of noise, but this is making like a pop pop sound. And I don't know if that's uh, because it's driving. There, right there it popped. And now it's making some weird rumbling noise uh, through the output. So that's strange. And the reverb's all the way down. The control is all the way down. So that is... That is strange indeed. Let's see. Okay, now this is incredibly odd because... Um, I'm up to, you know, about 100 volts on the input and I'm getting nothing, almost, through the output at all. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Look at this, the gain. I can crank the gain all the way up, the volume all the way up, master volume all the way up. Master seems to be doing nothing at all. So we this thing, and that's all I can get out of this. Right there. So there's bigger problems than just um, just V3 apparently. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, yeah, the boost channel is just all but dead. I mean, it's all but dead. What the hell? Interesting. Okay. Aha, look at this. Check this shit out. Look what I did. All right, this is this might be my fault. Check this out. Okay, see V2 right there. See how it's actually dropping down further than all the other tubes, just slightly further. I think I may have crossed up on the pins, and I don't see any glow in it. So let's see if that might be the problem. Let's 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 kill the gain. And everything, so let's see. Well, I mean, the, the, the damn filament's glowing, so what? That doesn't make any sense. No, it's in there. No, there's a bent pin. See that bent pin right there? What the hell? Okay, let's straighten that pin and put it back in and try it again. No, that wasn't it. It's all the way in there now, for sure, and it's still doing the same thing, so that pin. Must have been slightly bent before I stuck it in there, so I don't know, man. Um, still getting really nothing out of this. Uh, guitar's all the way up. Got signal, just not enough of it. So what the hey? I guess I'm gonna have to bust out a signal trace on this and and figure it out that way. All right, on a hunch, I, I just kind of fired this thing back up, and uh, it was making some loud noise, and um, began to kind of squeal on me. It's sort of stopped that now, but we have 317 volts, 315 volts on uh, V3B. Why do we have 315 volts right there? That seems really, that seems pretty damn excessive. Let's, let's investigate this. All right, it's time to do some signal tracing. Um, I have my probe set up through my little custom amplifier back there, um, down up on the Variac, about halfway on this amp. Um, reason halfway is because I don't want to, I've ha been having some problems here and I don't want to, uh, blow my speaker or anything like that. Let's see. Well.
So yeah, that's that's V3. Definitely a problem. All right. Well, let's just go. Jesus. <laughs> All right. All right. So that's the plate of uh, V1A. Let's try V1B. Okay, we have this. We have signal there and there. Let's try V2. Actually, I don't think I'll. Yeah, on V2 I shouldn't have anything anyway, because V2, uh, we'll look at the schematic in a minute and I'll explain why on V2. Um, but it actually uh, takes a different route through V2. So let's actually go on to three V3B, right? V3B. See, okay, there's there's nothing there. V3B. Interesting that there would be nothing. Uh, so my signal is getting lost. Let's try V1A one more time. Interesting. Alright. So my signal is still there. Huh. I have a lesser signal on uh, V3A. Let's see, is that the one? V, let's see, V1B. Yeah, it should be V3. Actually, it should be V3A. And it should be louder than that. Let's see. Let's turn that all the way up. Okay. Okay, so V3A, I have signal up until that point. Okay, so following the schematic through, we tested the plate of V1, and we got signal right there. If we follow the signal on through, uh, it goes through this. What is this? This is a gain knob. And then uh, V1B, we tested also, and we got signal right there on the plate of V1B. And going through further, let's see what that is. That is uh, one mag log. That's another another gain. Why should we have two gains? Hmm. Maybe they're talking about the uh, second volume. But then again, there's a volume right here. So I don't know. I might have to look at this a little more closely. But at any rate, we are getting signal through V3A up to this point. Uh, at least on the boost channel. Okay, moving right through, I want to check both sides of C17. That's where the uh, that's where the signal picks back up. So we'll check both sides of C17, and then we'll check the wiper. Actually, we might just check the wiper coming off the treble, uh, and then proceed from there. Let's check that wiper. Okay, let's check the wiper of the treble. All right, got plenty of signal there. Okay, moving right through, we go through a 220K resistor and through C27 and then to the grid of V3B. So let's try the grid now of V3B. Okay, we have...
okay? Shit. Oops. Okay, the, well, it's hard to keep that probe on there. But we do have signal at the grid, and it's, it's working with the master volume, and the other controls as well on the boost channel are working. So we're good up to that point. Let's try the, uh, let's see, I guess let's try the, um, I'll try the plate of V3B, and then from there it goes to the reverb. See, that's a problem right there, because it's like we're, we're getting nothing right there. And it should be amplified by V3B. It's like V3B is just not right. That tube, V3B is not being, um, I'd say it's not, it's not uh, biased correctly. Something's not right. And it, if you'll recall, it had like 315 volts or something like that on it. So we need to figure out what's going on with V3B. Also, since we're looking at the schematic, um, if we'll notice, uh, right here at this point, when it uh, veers off and goes into V3B, which drives the, the reverb tank, okay, it takes another direction as well. There's another path that it takes. And from here it goes to the effects loop the thing is um, at the effects loop there it is constantly uh, it is constantly connected right here on the return um, jack and if that is corroded then it will not get through to V4A and if we check V4A let's go ahead and do that <clears throat> while we're thinking about it. All right, let's check the signal at V4A. Okay, well at least we do have signal there, so that's good, that's a good sign. Um, so that tells me that uh, that connection at the, the effects loop jack is good so we don't have to worry about that uh, so let's move along through to the phase inverter and see where we're losing signal all right out of v4a we come uh, to the plate and let's actually go ahead and check the plate while i'm thinking about it Okay. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, on the plate of V4A, I'm getting almost no signal. My signal's falling out. So, V4. Let's replace V4 and see uh, what happens. Okay, we have a different tube in V4 now. Um, so, V4A, we'll check again at the grid. Now we're getting no oh, I turned it down, that's why. Alright. So we're getting something at the grid. So that's much better. Now we're actually getting something at the uh Okay, we're getting something at the plate of V4 now. Whereas before we were getting nothing, so I wonder if that was the problem. Okay, so in spite of uh, now having good signal on the plate of V4A, we still have nothing really to speak of at the output. I think it was probably improved a little bit, um, but we're still dropping signal somewhere beyond this point. So um, let's look up point Y, and we'll go to the other half of the schematic. Let's see, we're going in Y, which is getting us to V5, uh, the grid of V5, I, I'm presuming that's A. Uh, so we have a 0.022 capacitor, C25. So let's find C25 and check that out, or we could just go to the grid. 
All right, let's go to the phase inverter and see if we get signal. Right there. We have signal, but it's not very much. Okay, I've been racking my brain on where and how I'm dropping signal on this thing. And um, I've tested most of these components around this phase inverter. And um, I've concluded that it has to be something in one of these components. And looking at the uh, feedback here, this is the negative feedback, which is actually fed into... Um, it's also fed into the second half of the phase inverter, the long tail pair here. Uh, this is supposed to be a 100, 100K resistor R47. Um, the problem is, whenever I actually go to R47, which is that guy right there, it is indeed a 100K resistor, brown, black, yellow. I'm measuring in circuit 4.5K. So that's very low resistance for that feedback. Now, I don't know if that could be causing this problem. And uh, I don't know if that resistor is is just showing me a false reading because it's still in circuit and I've got something else in parallel somewhere um, that I'm not considering but it doesn't look to me like there should be anything else so I think what I need to do is uh, go on the assumption that R47 is probably a bad resistor and change it and see where that gets us so the best way to test this without pulling the board and or clipping out that uh, resistor uh, would be to just follow the negative feedback which is this purple wire over to where it connects to the output here and we'll just desolder it from there and then try the amp without negative feedback and that uh, will eliminate that as a possibility okay remove the negative feedback you can see the wire protruding upward right there going nowhere just like an Alaskan bridge and uh, we're gonna try um, and see what happens. So we'll dial it up a little bit. V3 is still problematic. I'm not sure what's going on with V3. You know what? I might have to just go through and just shotgun all of these uh, these capacitors to really be sure about what's going on here. Well, the saga on this thing continues. It seemed for a moment, a little bit earlier, when I had it dialed up, uh, that it was working normally without the negative feedback in place. And then it just kind of popped and then went right back down where it was um, so I'm not sure but I did discover one thing and I'll show you as soon as this thing gets uh, it's warmed up and it's probably gonna make some god-awful noise uh, warning for your headphone users but look when I tap this part of the board over here don't say I didn't warn you <laughs> but it's strange because it seems to be tapping this part of the board here that causes the issue I can tap other parts of the board and it's not as effective. Um, but look. I mean, this is just the wildest. This is the wildest freaking thing. Look at that. Okay. 
That's interesting. That wire right there. I should have just probably busted out this chopstick from the very beginning and it would have saved me some damn time. Uh, where are we going here? We're going right there. So I don't know if that's... I mean, just wild. This is the wildest shit. Okay. Where's this, where's this sucker going? It's going over to that .22 right there. And then we have a resistor here as well that's been changed before. I just... And it's also tied into this... Uh, also tied into this little transistor and the LED, but I don't think it has anything to do with that. Huh. I mean, without a doubt, it seems to have something to do with this socket but I see no physical abnormalities with this socket whatsoever. I mean, none. Um, geez, I, I'm just, uh, I mean, I'm at a loss. Let's, let's, I guess, let's uh, flip this thing over and just look at the socket. I may just change it for giggles. I don't think it's going to affect anything at all, but I'm really almost at my wits end here. All right, I'm beginning to be highly suspicious of the switching um, system in this amplifier. One of the reasons being this component right here uh, that's marked link, that is that guy right there that has already been changed. Um, so somebody already at one point or another has been servicing uh, this amp and more specifically servicing the switching. Uh, also, if I'm tapping on V3 and V3A is connected, uh, more specifically, actually I was moving, this is the green wire that I was moving a second ago with with my uh, probe, and uh, if that wire is causing so much um, problem, so much of a problem, then you would you would venture a guess that it would be associated component c12 right there connects over here to this ic which is part of this switching um there's a lot of stuff in this switching besides just the ic but most of it is contained within it uh so if something is going to be a problem in this in the switching circuit uh your number one you know suspect is going to be this IC followed by probably the transistors um, or maybe you know diodes but those I can test easy enough the transistors and the diodes but the IC might be a little more difficult we'd have to look up uh, specs on this particular IC and kind of go from there to troubleshoot that but I think what I'm going to do right here is just lift C12 so that we're removing all of this switching uh, matrix from the, um, you know, from the equation. So we're eliminating variables. Okay, here we are once again. I have removed that uh, C. What was it? C twenty C twelve. That guy right in there. C twelve. You can see an empty space for it. I have removed it, and we now have full volume on this amplifier. We do still have issues, but we have found full volume. Um, the thing is, I've, I've still, I still have the negative feedback out, so that's going to cause some noise. But now, my master volume at least works. Um, my gain works. Boost volume. You can still hear we have some... Uh, we still have a, a tube that is microphonic. Um, 
Okay, this capacitor tests okay. Um, it has the right capacitance value and it's not turning into a resistor at low voltages at least, so we're okay with that. Okay, I suppose the thing to do now would be to just go through this entire foot switch uh, circuit and test every component in the switching circuit. Okay, this was somewhat interesting. I pulled these capacitors out and tested them out of circuit and both of them measured correctly. Um, but we were getting some weird stuff with them in circuit. Um, so I followed this through. Uh, actually, one of the things that I noticed was even with a uh, with a, with something plugged into the input, which uh, what happens when you do that, you actually uh, disconnect this connection right here, which normally will go to ground. So the foot switching and everything, also this circuit is all grounded when not when there's nothing plugged into the amp when there is something plugged in the amp this is lifted uh, and this connection is broken so basically you could take this out and disregard that um, but uh, measuring across this capacitor right here this 100 microfarad c45 i was getting like um you know i was getting a resistance to ground so tracing it through, where could the resistance be coming from? Well, it could be coming from, I suppose, this capacitor here. And we will check that one as well. But just on a hunch, I, I kind of thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe through this diode and through TR1 right here to ground, maybe we're getting some kind of connection also. Um, it could be something internally to IC1. But, but I checked uh, this one, TR1, by lifting two of the legs. So it was basically connected to nothing. And uh, something curious is happening now. I can actually get sound on. That's on the boost. When I engage the boost only, can I get sound. When I disengage the boost, I get nothing. Hardly at all. I can hear maybe a tiny, tiny amount of something there, but almost nothing at all. Um, so I'm thinking TR1 is uh, faulty. So I'm going to replace TR1 and see what happens. All right, TR1 is a BC184, and it's just basically a N NPN small signal signal transistor. Uh, so pretty much anything that follows the collector base and emitter um, leads configuration and and is an NPN uh, should work. So let me find something in my stash that will work for this. Okay, here's one that I have a lot of. This is a small signal NPN transistor as well, and this one actually uh, has a different diagram where the emitter is number one. So it goes emitter, base, collector, where the other one was collector, base, emitter. So essentially all we need to do is just flop the thing around and install it in reverse, and that should take, uh, that should take care of it. Okay, so I went ahead and replaced both of those transistors um, that are in this circuit. There's one right here, TR1, and if you uh, come over here off of this lead of the foot switch uh, through this resistor, there's another one down here, TR2, that could pull signal to ground, so I decided to uh, replace it also. So both of those have been replaced, and we do have some sound on, again... The boost. When the boost is engaged, we have sound. And I've also changed the uh, <clears throat> V3 tube, and it seems to be stable now. V3 is is good. So that that tube has been swapped out, and every I don't hear any of that kind of popping. Um, you know the problems we were having before. So at least that part is correct. Now let's go back through and replace these capacitors that might also be pulling signal to ground. And we'll do that uh, anywhere else where, where we see a signal could be pulled to ground. Okay, here's where we're at so far. I've replaced uh, this capacitor. I've replaced this capacitor. I've replaced this capacitor. Uh, I've replaced this transistor and this transistor um, let's see what else 
I have a couple of other capacitors here that I have yet to replace. Uh, and I have this big C9 capacitor right here, which is a 3300 microfarad capacitor going from this line, um, which is pretty much the main switching line, to ground. Uh, what the amp is doing right now is um, actually it will work about half-assed. I'll show you what I mean. Let's plug a let's plug a lead into it. Let's see. All right, let's plug a lead in, and I'll show you what it's doing. For about the first few seconds after it gets warmed up, I can actually get uh, the normal channel or the you know the normal volume to work correctly. Let's see where are we here? So it will work for the first few seconds, but then after it charges, we're going to hear a pop. Okay, so obviously something's not right there, right? Okay, it might be instructive here to talk a little bit about how the switching works on this amplifier before we uh, proceed. And also, uh, let's talk about where we are with the amp. Uh, the amp works, um, and the boost channel works. So when you hit the boost on the foot switch, um, all of your knobs and everything on the boost channel work. Volume on the master works, all of it. Um, the normal channel, however, only works for about the first few seconds when you start the amp up. When you power it up, uh, every, all the voltages are still rising, everything's still settling down, and, uh, and it works for just, you know, probably a good 15, 20 seconds. Then there, you hear a, kind of a pop, and then it goes pretty much dead. So that's where we're at right now. The normal channel will work for a few seconds, and then something kind of pops, or switches, or what have you, and it goes, that channel goes dead. You can hit the boost at any point, though, and, and use this channel. All right, after changing all the capacitors in the switching matrix, uh, I went back, was still getting those noisy pops and all that kind of crap, and uh, narrowed it down to the V2 tube, uh, or the V1 tube, I'm not really sure which, but I went in and replaced both of those because the V1 tube that was sent with this thing was, um, uh, was pretty borderline dead anyway so i replaced v1 and v2 and now this thing's rocking like a hurricane so let's uh give it a listen and uh check it out <laughs>
All right, that concludes our video on this mid-1980s Marshall 4210, also known as the 2205 head version. Hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and for now, y'all take care.